Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors. I'm Dean. Thanks for stopping in because in today's video we're going to see how to make this pretty cool little gun display cabinet. The display racks and cases have been around for a little while now and they are a pretty cool addition to our camp builds but sometimes they're a little boring. For example, the gun racks. They've just got a skin of a pegboard on them. I think they could have done a little better. But hopefully with today's tips and tricks, you'll get some ideas on how you can make a pretty cool little gun rack display cabinet and make your displayed weapons look their best. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at something that's really important before we get started and that is how the metal post and the walls snap onto the foundation and the floors. For instance here this metal post is half on the foundation and half sticking off on the side. So the foundation's running right through the middle of it. But on this wall the wall is actually setting on a foundation and the outside of the wall is the edge of the foundation that it's sitting on. If we flip the wall around, then now it's sitting on this foundation that's on the right hand side. So therefore we have about half the thickness of that metal post. It's important to know that because we're going to be moving some foundations around manually or freehand and we're going to want to know how far to move them. So to start off with wherever we're going to build our locker we've taken the wall out. Now we need to create a marker. So we'll move one of our foundations and snap it to the outside of our foundations. We'll move the next one away. What we need to do is be able to slide this foundation forward until it's half the thickness of a metal post or the thickness of a wall in front of the wall. And in case you don't know how to do that, just simply select the foundation, then press and hold the select button, then use your directional lever or pad to move it forwards or backwards. Once we've moved it up far enough, we can see that it's about half the thickness of a metal post or the thickness of a wall. We can now move our foundation back in. We'll move our marker foundation over because we need a new snap point for a ladder. What we're doing here is creating a new snap point with the foundations for a floor. We're going to use two half of floors up here. The second half floor we're going to offset to the left. It's a quarter floor to the left offset once again. What this has done is it's created a new snap point for a metal post to go on. And by doing it like this, we can put it right on the edge of the foundation and the wall. Also, because of the way we move the foundation, we're now in front of the wall nice and tight. Now we'll move the floor over one, and we'll snap another post in on the other side. Now we can go ahead and take our floors out, we can move our stairs over and we're going to repeat the process one more time. We've got to move this foundation so that we can get a wall in there. So what we'll do is we'll take out our one foundation and use it as a marker once again. Move this one out of the way and we can get back down in here and move this piece around freely. We'll go ahead and pull it forward and we're going to want to try to make it flush or straight right in the front of the metal post. And we'll see that here. You want to try to get this as close as you can. If it's too far away or too close, you're just going to have a gap or make your thickness of your locker a little thinner. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. We can snap our foundation back in. Let's move our marker back to where it's supposed to go. 
and once again we'll move the ladder onto our new snap point. We'll put our floor back up and that way we can snap a door into it. By using a floor we can use that as a snap point for a wall and we don't have to use the foundation. So I'll put up the two half of floors and now we can go ahead and choose a wall to go in here. We'll want to make sure it snaps in. Once it does, go ahead, change the variance to whatever door that you would like. Uh, they all have different looks and you can get all kinds of different uh, looks out of it. So have fun with choosing a different door to go in here. Now there's something that we got to do still. So we're going to go ahead and store our door and move our first foundation back to where it's supposed to be. The second foundation is going to stay there because it's the support for the ladder and the floors up above. What we're going to do now is actually add in some lighting. Once we've got our build up, we're going to want some light in there shining down on our weapons. So I'll use this upright and I'll kind of line it up the best that I can. We'll put a short conduit on that and now we can attach a light of your choice onto the bottom of the conduit. Now keep in mind some of the wider lights might interfere with the walls going on, but uh, any of these thin lights will work just fine. Now we can go ahead and store our upright and our short conduits floating in the air. Alright, let's turn our attention to our walls. Now I've changed them actually both into doors to make this a little bit easier. Also, if you're going to wallpaper, do it now. In case you don't know, any objects that you put on the wall, and I mean any object, once you wallpaper it, it just stores that object. And you have to get it back out again. So, wallpaper on first. We're going to use a couple of these gun display racks, and this way I can kind of get an idea of what's center, side to side, and up and down for our racks, to make it look the best from looking at it through the door. And you can just adjust these however you want, put, you, put in whichever one of the racks you want. It's really up to you. Also, we're going to take a quick test and make sure that we can snap it back in. Now, we could snap the first front door in, and it will snap, but it's not going to go in. The reason is, is the foundation is underneath of it. Remember, we can't snap any wall or door on or over the top of a foundation. So we have to move it back. Once we do that, now we can snap our front door on and it'll go in there nice and easy. Also, once we've done that, we can just move our foundation back to its original spot. and. Now we're ready to go ahead and put in our door. Now you can really use any door here that you would like. Once again, I'm going to use this wire mesh door. Also, make sure you snap it on in a way that the door opens outwards and not inwards. It'll still open, but it kind of looks weird. And sometimes it's hard to target to close it again as well. Now we'll go ahead and take one of these shelves and because the back wall is a door we'll be able to slide this in there. I'll line it up on the foundation, that little line that was on the foundation, just to kind of try to get it as straight as we can. I'll move it in here, I'm going to pull it towards the door as close as I can because what I don't want it to do is stick out the back of the wall. What we're going to do is change the wall or the door I should say back into a wall and if it's out there too far then that cabinet will stick out and I had to adjust it once there myself but there we go we got our nice little cabinet made and uh, it's ready for some guns alright now let's go ahead store our floors and because the wall will float and because we use the floors as a support we can take them out and voila we've got a wall in there that doesn't need any support we can place our back wall in uh, make the wallpaper or make it the color of our wallpaper 
and it's pretty much ready for decorating. Also, we could get our wiring ran over to it and get our light working as well. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. A pretty cool little gun locker. And now all you have to do is spend a little time and decorate it up. It really does look pretty good. Now I know what you're thinking. Three weapons bones? <laughs> Come on, dude. I got way more weapons than that that I want to display. Well, I've got your back. To create this gun display, we're going to use the same tips and tricks that we've been using. But we're going to add a few extra steps in along the way. I'll point those out as we come across them. Now we're going to start off by moving our marker foundation in just like we did in the beginning of this video. That creates a new snap point for floors that we can snap a metal post to. This display will be two foundations wide. So we'll add a few extra floors in so that we can snap a metal post in over on that side of the build. Now we'll readjust our foundations once again, but instead of being flush or right in front of the metal post, we'll move them out so that we can create another new snap point for another metal post. And we now have two metal posts side by side. What I'd like to do is repeat this process one more time and get it three metal posts wide. Now you could do this over and over again as much as you would like and make this four or five or whatever thick. It's all up to you. Now if you are wanting to put a vending station in, you will have to go at least four metal posts thick before you can get the vending station in. We'll see that a little later in the video. Now that we're checking out our foundations, we can see that the type of door that we're going to use is going to snap on the foundation and therefore they're not in the right spot. So one more time we'll adjust the foundation so that we got enough room to snap a door on on the foundation that's on the left and be in front of the metal posts. Alright, now normally we make our snap points from the inside. But because of the type of door that we're going to use, the outside will be facing inside. So we'll need to make our snap point on the back side of the wall. Also, we can move our foundations out of the way. We're about ready to snap our door in. Now don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, remember, you cannot snap a door or a wall over the top of a foundation. I have a couple of friends that really struggle with that. All right, let's put a couple of floors up so that we can create a snap point for our door. And we're going to use the roll-up warehouse door. We can snap them to the floors. And yeah, that looks pretty good. That really ought to give us a lot of room for displaying weapons. All right, now that we've got our door in, we can put our foundations back where they need to go. We're about ready to add some power to this puppy. But before we do that, let's go around to the back and let's store the floors that we use to snap this door up. Now don't store the foundation, just in case you make a mistake or you need to make some adjustments. If you do, you're going to have to repeat all those processes over again to get back to this point. All right, let's add in a switch and connect it up to our door and to power. Now, I really wish the power pylon that has the keypad on it worked because it would be ideal for this type of a build. But sadly, it's never worked. Now, I went this wide because I want to place in a heavy weapons rack. And it needs to be at least three posts wide for that to fit in. If you're thinking this is a good idea for a vending machine, you're right, it is. But there's a couple of things you're going to need to know. First of all, three metal posts is not wide enough for a vending machine to fit into. You're going to need to go with at least four. Even though the vending machine is turning green, it will not allow you to put it down because it's colliding with the door if you closed it. 
Here I've got the heavy weapons rack and I want to place it underneath the door and you can see I'm having the same issue. That's because if we close the door it's going to collide with that. So we're going to move it back and up against the edge of the floor about as far away as the thickness of a door. So remember if you're having trouble with putting objects in it's because of the roll up door and you're going to need to go wider or find a different route to get the object in. Alright next thing we'll want to do is add in some lighting. We're going to use the same tip that we used in our first segment and just attach some lights to some of these short conduits. Once we do that we can go ahead and store the upright and the conduit will just float in the air. Now really at this time you could put these lights in any way that you wanted to. You could use cycling lights or whatever. I chose to put them on the side that should be about where the doors are at. And speaking of our walls let's get to work on those. First thing we're going to want to do is put our wallpaper on. The next thing we'll do is put a few of the display racks up. Now you could really put these up any way that you would like. I've got a couple of short ones in there. Uh, you could fill the whole area up. Whatever, it's entirely up to you. Now also, before we put these in, there's something else that you need to know. If you're going to put any wall-mounted objects on there, like this picture or a mount, you're going to want to do it before you put the walls in. Once again, the roll-up door hinders us on putting anything up against the wall. So keep that in mind. It's just going to say whatever. Uh, object is colliding with pre-existing object or is floating. So remember, any wall-mounted objects, now's the time to put them on before you put the walls in. All right, let's go ahead and do that. We'll grab this one. We'll place it in there. Looks good. And now we'll grab this one, which just happens to be where our wall-mounted objects stuck to. And there you go. You can see how that looks. Now, to show you what I mean, let me go ahead and select this picture. And you can see we've got an error. And it won't let us put it down. So we'll just hit B to let it go back. And that's why we put them on before we put the walls in. All right, next thing I want to do is add more of these shelves in. I like the way they look. And you could add more heavy weapon racks in or more weapon racks. I mean, you can really fix this up however that you, you would like it to be. And I'm going to put one in on the other side as well. And we'll line it up on the floor or the foundation right there. Make sure it's fairly straight. And we'll move them in and place them down. All right. Now all we have to do is change our doors into walls. And just like that, we've got our weapons locker made. Now all we have to do is decorate it and get some power to it so the lights come on. And there we go, all lit up and looking pretty good. All right, one more tip before we end the video today. Sometimes on top of this roll-up door, you can get objects to set up there. But it's pretty tough to do that. If we get up on a ladder, the area that we can set objects down on is a little more generous. But what we can really notice is how it drops down and behind the door. That's because there's nothing there for it to set on. Well, the tip I'd like to show today is how you can put something up there so you can pretty much set anything that you would like up on top of that door. Now, to do this, what we'll want to do is use a stair and put a floor in on the side of our gun display case, our, our gun display area. We can take a short conduit, lay it on the floor, and you're going to want to try to line this up the best you can, especially if you're going to go the full length across the top of the, the door. Now down on a foundation, lay a medium length conduit down and set a rug on top of it. 
Now you can adjust the rug from side to side as much as you need to. If part of it's colliding with something, just readjust it again so that it doesn't collide. And now you can take it up, snap it on top, up where the conduit is on the floor, and now you can take the conduit that you used as a marker away and it'll now float up above and you can pretty much put anything on top of this uh, you could put a table uh, tried a chair that worked pretty good there was quite a few objects as long as it'll set on the carpet it'll set up on top and as a final thing I tried a planter and sure enough it's setting up there and down from here you can't see the carpet or the rug and the metal conduit so it really hides it out and it gives you a nice area to set things on alright let's take a look at our build at night completed and semi decorated up and boy I really like that that sure looks good now I didn't put that many racks up however many that you want to do is entirely up to you uh, this character is a low-level character, so she doesn't really have all that many weapons. And it was kind of hard to fill it up there a little bit. And now let's take a look at our first gun display cabinet. It's all decorated up, and we can see what that looks like. You know, for me, this one's actually my favorite. I know it's small, and it doesn't really hold a lot of weapons, but I really like the way that the light shines down on the weapon and you can see it through the door. So for me, personally, I really like this one. Now I know for you guys and gals that are maybe vending or doing something like that, then the garage roll-up door one was probably your favorite. It does have a lot of options. You can add in some more extra metal posts, make it a little wider, add in some vending machines, there's really a lot of possibilities with this particular setup. Also, it will display an awful lot of weapons. All right, everyone. Thank you all very much for stopping in, hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate it. I hope today's video inspired or gave you some ideas on some cool things that you can build in your next settlement build. And just like always, everyone, until next time, please stay safe and peace.